Hey everybody, Jeff here on the Learn Portrait Drawing channel and in this video we are going to watch how I drew this portrait right here. And as always, before I do these tutorial videos, I like to just sit with you, kind of share my thoughts on how things went, give you a little preview of it. This is an artist by the name of Duncan Way. He's very, very talented. He's somebody who I admire his work. And so when I saw this picture of him, I knew that I wanted to at least give it my best shot and see if I could capture his likeness. And what I really liked about this particular picture is the use of lights and darks. You know, really bright light coming from one side, shadow on the other side. It gives a really cool effect, uh, especially when you're drawing in charcoal. So, with that being said, uh, as we sit and watch this, I want you to notice that we start out very rough. We start out with something that looks like a child could draw it, and we take it and then we transform it into this. And so I think you're going to find it really helpful. Before I continue, I just want to say, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Be sure you turn on the little bell notification and give this video a thumbs up for me. It really helps out, lets YouTube know that we like this sort of thing and we want to see more of it. So without further ado, let's sit down and learn how we drew this portrait number 10. Well hello everybody. Are we ready to draw today? I sure hope so. I'm speaking to myself as well as to you. Because I never know at this stage when I sit down what I'm going to feel like. You know, i got a lot of emotions going on, a lot of uncertainty. But sometimes I always say the hardest part of drawing is the start. Once we start, then it usually kind of flows. So what I'm going to do first is, uh, and for those of you who have never been to my channel before, uh, I'm going to walk you through my thought process as we sit together and draw a picture. And hopefully this will help uh, those of you who are learning or who might be like me, who aren't trained, just who like to draw, want to learn to draw better. Um, that's what I'm hoping. So what I want to do or what I usually have been doing is using a piece of soft charcoal and we want to lay out on the paper where everything's gonna lie. So this doesn't have to be accurate but you want to consider where do you want you know the portrait to, to be. Where do you want the top to be? Where do you want the sides to be? So I'm right at the top here. Let me get on the camera. I'm gonna lower it just a little bit here. Okay so I'm gonna say this is the top and just imagining where I want maybe the chin to be. Maybe I'll say the chin is going to be down in here. So what I want to do is just kind of take some outlines here. And kind of just create an envelope around the face. You know, it's almost some people might start with the big circle. I've done that in a few of my other videos. Uh, but again, we're just, this is very rough. This is just sort of a tool to help get our brains to get in a drawing mode. Okay, so look at that. That doesn't look like anything like a head. This is just me trying to picture maybe what his where where it's gonna lie. And and as we draw, we're gonna adjust all this. It might get wider, it might get narrower, it might get longer. But this is kind of just me laying down a rough envelope of possibly the outside shape of the head. Okay, and again, if I want the chin to maybe be about here, I'm imagining how big the face is. Okay, so I'm imagining, you know, maybe the hairline's going to be up in 
this area, perhaps. We don't know. Could change. Most likely will change. You know. But I'm just putting down marks here. Just as a template. We're going to slowly, we're going to try and work bigger down to smaller. Okay? So again, this looks nothing like the picture you're seeing. But that's okay. The eyes are probably going to be somewhere on this line, if I'm guessing. So I'm just lightly putting in something here. I don't know if this is exactly accurate. Nose. Usually the face is divided into thirds. So chin to the bottom of the nose, nose to the eyebrows, eyebrows to the hairline. So obviously there's Let's see if this is kind of where I want. Let me go a little bit lower, make a mark. Chin to nose, nose to eyebrows. That's probably a little bit better for the nose, the nose line. So I'm going to just make a little mark here. I'm just going to tell my brain maybe that's where the nose is going to be. This is where the chin's going to be. Eyebrow line probably be up in this area somewhere. Okay. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly accurate at this point because we will be adjusting everything. The side plane up here. Okay. So we'll say eyebrows, nose, chin. And uh, I wonder if we should even bother with the width of the head right now. Let me uh, take a. Ex Try, I'm trying to take a rough measurement. So this is about the width of the head. So the head needs to be more narrower if I'm saying this is the height and the width. So that means I need to figure out we're going to have to shrink this down. So that in. This probably has to come in a little bit. Okay, so usually when it comes to width I find um, that always is easy to adjust as we go on because we're going to end up starting with like the eyes and stuff and kind of work our way outward. I'm just trying to get my brain to focus on the layout. Okay. We're just putting down placeholders here. Okay, so if I'm going to say 
The eyebrows are going to be sort of in this. This is the brow ridge here. You know, the middle's probably he's slightly off center, so you know, I'm going to say this is sort of the middle line maybe. So we're, we're favoring, there's more seen on this side than this side. Okay, we already said this is going to be the eyebrows. So all these marks that you see me making are going to be lost. You know, as my hand brushes against it, my fingers rub against it, we're going to, it's just going to disappear. But that's okay because we're not trying to get anything accurate at this point except for where we want the features to be. So if the eyebrow is going to be here, we said the nose is going to be here. This is the bottom of the nose. Okay. Trying to be loose, as loose as I can. Just trying to imagine where maybe the eye is going to be, you know, the actual eye. Um, this actually is probably has to come in more. Usually the eye is about the same eye width apart. Okay. And then I'm looking, if I'm going to say this is about the edge of the face, uh, look where his eye goes to, and it looks like it goes to pretty close to the edge. Okay. So he's going to have an eye in here. He'll have an eye over here. Pupil. Be in here, people over here. Again, we're not concerned about does this look like the person. That's not what we're doing here. We're just trying to look at angles of things. See, does this angle from the corner of the eye down to the nose, does this, does that angle match the side of the nose. What about this angle? The eye to the side of the nose. Okay. We're just trying to look at those kinds of things. You know, his mouth I'm going to try something here. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not measuring. I'm just taking some guesses. Usually they say the mouth is divided into thirds. So you have the mouth, the bottom of the chin, and then that. So I'm not sure if that's going to be his case here. But maybe it is. Let's just try that. It's sort of a, gener a generic rule that if you divide the nose to the chin into thirds, so you draw two lines and then just basically three equal parts, this is going to be the mouth.
and then this is sort of the bottom of the chin. Mouth here, bottom of the chin, somewhere here. Okay. Okay. So again, and this is also what's going to be fascinating is when we look at a drawing like this it doesn't look anything like the subject okay but at the end it will so especially as new artists learning artists it's important at this stage to not get too distracted and too unsure of yourself. Just go with it. Your brain's going to try and tell you, what are you doing? This doesn't look anything like anything. But don't worry about that yet. We're just giving ourselves permission to put down our best guesses and then we'll, we'll refine it later. So there's certain things that I'm trying to tell myself are not going to change. Things that I've locked in. I've locked in that I want the chin to be here. I've locked in, this is where the nose is going to be, this is where the eyebrows are going to be, the hairline is roughly there. I've locked in that this is the basic width by comparing it with the values that I've already set. Since I already said this is the chin and this is the eyebrows, I figured out you know, that the width will be based on that. So we're locking in these certain things. And again, what's kind of neat about this technique or this approach is it gives you the freedom to put marks on the paper. Remember what I said in the beginning, the hardest part, at least for me, is getting started. That's because when you do this, you've, you've already started. It doesn't have to look like anything yet because we're just getting something down. We're starting. Okay. So I'm not asking myself if I'm happy with does this look like the picture. I'm asking myself am I happy with where it, it lies on the paper with this much space on this side and this much space on this side. You know, and it looks like the shoulders might come out of over here. Okay. And up here, this is going to be a little bit higher. This is going to come out this way. Okay. And then his, you know, it might come down like this with his neck come down this way. This is all going to change. My hand's going to rub on all this. It's going to all be erased. But this is, again, this is just what we're doing to get a layout. So I think I'm happy with that layout. Okay. Eye to the nose. And now the fun and challenging part. It's going to be taking this and turning it into an actual person.
Okay? So then I'll take my hand and I'll just kind of lose everything. Lose it in here. And what we're doing is we're knocking everything back. We're kind of at the same time it's adding charcoal to the paper. I'm kind of trying to rub in because I know this side's the shadow side, as you could see. And this is going to be the lighter side. This is all in shadow. Okay. But see, now what we did, we can still see kind of where we're going to start. We're going to start with the eyes in this area, the nose in this area. It's not just a blank piece of paper anymore. Okay, so let me not get too hyper focused here. So I'm going to put, let's see, I wonder what I want to start with. Looks like his eyes are pretty much on the same level as far as, you know, where the top is, you know, if the top of the eye is up in here. It's the same over on the other side. Now I said this is where the brow ridge is. So as you can see, there's not a lot of room between the eyebrows and the top of his eye, right? If you look at the picture, his eyebrows are pretty straight here. Now, there's, uh, this is where we have to make some decisions. So I'm going to make a decision right now that this is the side of the head. Okay? And I'm going to kind of base everything off it. So I see that the eyebrow goes right to the side. And I'm going to say the eye goes to here. And so I want to look and just see. Take a couple more measurements. So this comes up pretty close to that eyebrow. I said the other eye is probably going to be... Where's that going to start? Oops. If I'm going to say this is the outside of the nose, it starts a little in. about in here. Okay, so I'm going to say this is the ins inside part of the eye. I 
it looks really big. At least this part does. So maybe what I need to be thinking about here is where the bottom of the eye is going to be. You know, maybe this is going to be the, the bags of the eye. Maybe those come in here sort of like the eye socket. So what I'm trying to do here, what I'm thinking about, is where the eye is going to fall within here. So the eyes, you know, a circle, right? This looks very, very big to me. I don't know if I'm doing this correctly. But again, it's also important to tell yourself <clears throat> at this stage it's okay. Don't, uh, don't get too down on yourself right here. Everything, especially with me, it looks bigger in my mind because we are making it bigger. I'm looking at a little picture <clears throat> on my iPad and I'm enlarging it onto a piece of paper. So everything looks big. So right now I'm going, man, that eye looks huge, right? That eye looks very, very big. But I'm trying to keep everything in perspective and look at the eye in relation to everything else. Look at the eye in relation to the eyebrow. Okay. Don't get too carried away. All right.
So I'm trying to st still kind of keep everything in some sort of perspective. Okay. Now, not no, so nothing smooth at this point. I haven't started using any, you know, blending techniques or anything like that. I'm just trying to remember this is the bottom of the nose. Okay. This is the side of the nose. Over in this area, I said this was going to be the side of the nose over on this area. And I, I'm trying to be mindful of the angle of everything, where everything is going to fall. Right now this looks, again, very rough, very big. Not necessarily accurate. But this is, that's just the stage we're at. Okay. I'm trying to like compare, you know, this distance here. So let me move over to the other eye. This is the side of the nose. here Let me just uh, see if I could take a couple rough measurements with my pencil and my hand stretched out I mean it's about the it, it's roughly the same width as the eye So let me just stick with it right there. end of the eye is about over on that side. That's probably about right. Somewhere in that area. So I'm just trying to do my best to be observant. I 
think the other eye maybe is in this general area. And he's got this shadow under his eye. And you know, kind of, I'll kind of try and maintain the same sort of line here. Just so I, I don't lose track of perspective. Okay, not pressing too hard. Eyebrows, again, pretty close to the eye. Kind of extend out a little bit past where the eye is. Now if this is the side of the nose, well, let's see, we'll have to double check our nose again. It's roughly, it's going to have to, I think the nose is going to be much bigger than I was thinking. the nose now is going to be wider than I had it. Look at I thought it was here, here, might be closer to somewhere around in, in this area, at least the side of the nose. You know, this, this side of the nose. This is the bottom plane of the nose. This is where a lot of trust has to come in. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to look where the know the edges of the nostrils are and going straight up and kind of comparing okay well where does it fall on the eye So that <clears throat> looks huge, but we haven't put any shapes in yet. So that's probably okay to keep in mind. You know, the ball, the nose, you know, it's up in, you know, he's very, uh, his nose is almost I want to say the focal point, but I'm just trying to get an idea of his nose from this picture is a little bit on the larger side. I'm looking at the nostril. 
and so I'm imagining the shading here the shadow looks like it kind of rolls up kind of goes up this direction it's going to meet the eyebrow which this is all going to be in shadow So just some rough marks here for maybe the eyebrow up here. Okay. So no details yet. This is all in shadow. Kind of comes up. up over here. No, his hairline's already all kind of rubbed out, but that's okay. I'm not super concerned about this at this point. I'm just more concerned about the shading make sure we're going to get this down correctly. I, I. This. Trying to look at the, uh, the line of his brow. where it kind of starts up in here maybe. It's got this nice looking line here. Oops. Almost time to stop. So this kind of comes up not quite that high. Okay, he's got this line. Comes up this way. He's got another one that's sort of directly above the eye. Right in here. got the some of the forehead lines that are going to be in here okay this is just us trying to map out everything and 
Remember, we said the chin was down here. We don't want to change that. Because we based everything off of that. We based, you know, so everything's based off that. Where the eyes are, how wide the nose is going to be. See, the nose isn't looking quite as wide as our brain was initially telling us now that we're starting to add in everything else. Okay? So again, we don't want to lose focus. So I'm kind of just roughly putting in these landmarks. I can kind of see where I said the mouth might be. So I'm kind of imagining the little smile line right in here. And then across from that, it just kind of forms the facial hair. go too dark on this part yet because I'm still not sure if I have to extend anything too far out. I want to try and get the distance right though between the eyebrow and where the hairline starts. So I want to look at this distance and compare that to something. For example, is the distance from the eyebrow to where his sideburns kind of start is that more or less the width of an eyeball? And I'm gonna say it's less than his eyeball. Yeah, so you, in other words, this if you take this distance, that's gonna to be too far. So, I'm trying to compare it with something. It's probably just about the width, maybe a little bit more than his pupil. From the eyebrow to the side of the head. So it's, it's kind of about, looks like it's kind of about where we had it. That distance is a little more. Okay. Chin line down here. Kind of comparing that to maybe his nose, so it looks like his chin is, you know, about the width of the nose. I'm trying to look at the overall picture. If I make it too small, then that's makes his chin too narrow. We don't want that. And it starts coming up here. I'm not sure how much I want to start shading here of the facial hair, but maybe we can start to get the mouth in here. I'm trying to look at the mouth 
just maybe the lips part and it looks like it falls right vertical to where the edge of the nostril is and it kind of we said this was the center line so right below the nose if this is the middle of the nose it's got the dark this dark area right in here at a slight angle okay looks like the mouth kinda has a slight angle to it comes right in here where it goes up a little bit and then just kind of goes over to this side and this side looks like it's just slightly outside of the nostril kind of where we have it so kind of a smirk and then his lips don't see much of the top lip but we do see where the facial hair goes down to which goes down pretty close to it so I'm just going to lightly shade in right now this area looks like it comes down And again, when we get when we start really doing the facial hair later, we'll go darker in certain areas cuz again, the hair, the facial hair is not all equal. It's not all the value is not all the same. You know, like right in here is going to be darker that I can see. But I'm not going to worry too much about that at this stage. And again, this my hand's going to end up smearing all this. So I'm not again, I'm not too concerned about this part because we're gonna this will be part of like the final stages the beard part will be part of the final stages when I do a lot of refining right now we're just trying to get some dark values down so I'm just kinda lightly shading everything This is all so far done with one pencil, the number four charcoal pencil. What are we at? I got about four minutes till my break. So at this stage of this first hour of the drawing, it's basically getting everything laid out, relatively proportioned to what the final drawing is going to be. Okay. It's what I've called in the past sort of the coloring book stage, which is not the greatest moniker to give it, but it's the stage where it's things are starting to, you're getting it yourself an outline. OK. 
okay? And in the next hour, we're going to start smoothing everything out. Okay, that's the plan at least. Okay, looks like the ear is somewhere in here. See, I already lost the ear that I kind of drew earlier. But I'm, I'm still not entirely confident about the width. So at the eyes, to that part of the hair, is that about to that wrinkle on the forehead? Not even close. eyes to there to the hair it's about this distance so this might I actually have to something has to change I'm thinking we have to bring this in a little bit on this side this might have to come in a little bit all right well I'll have about a minute left so what we'll do we'll take a break we'll come back we'll make our final little adjustments uh, just to double check the width to the height and then we'll start smoothing it out, making it more realistic. So be right back. All right, I'm back. So, this definitely, this side of the face, we're gonna have to bring in. And uh, I think we're gonna have to bring it in significantly. I'm thinking maybe it's going to have to come right to about here. Because if the face was just looking a little too wide for me. So look, just erase it. Okay. Just erase it. Still not uh, supremely confident on this one. I do see similarities between what I'm drawing and what I'm looking at, but I'm not too sure on the proportions. So, that remains to be seen, what it, the final picture is going to look like.
So I'm just kind of walking through it in my mind. We again, we haven't blended anything yet. But I'm just trying to see how everything looks. I'm thinking maybe the... I'm not sure what, what I need to adjust. I don't want to mess with the chin because we said that's the chin, that's the nose. So I'm just wondering if the like the brow the needs to change, not, you know, like the, the height of the forehead. It looks like the nose, the tip of the nose to where the eyes are is the top of the eyebrow to the hairline. So this needs to go up just a little bit to maybe here. Top of the eyebrow to hairline is the same as the nose. I don't know, something, something in there. Sometimes it's just little things, such as where the hair is, that can make or break or kind of throw you, throw you off. So, I'm going to have to keep on doing my little tests here to see my measurements here. it's still too wide but if I bring this in I don't know if that's gonna look the way I want it to look So it might be a little off, but we'll have to see about that. We'll have to see what we're going to do about that. So now I'm just going to take my blending stump and we're just going to blend everything in here. This is part of the process where the drawing will get a little bit smoother. And I'm just going to concentrate on the face, not the hair yet. Because I think this, is, this hair is going to change. I think I'm... My brain is seeing this as the edge of the face, but... It, it might have to go in. I'm not sure. There's something that I'm not feeling horribly confident with at this point. So...
It's looking funny, isn't it? <laughs> in all the facial hair for now. Just gonna smear it off my hands anyway, so might as well get something down here. I'm kind of quiet guys those of you who've been watching my videos know that uh, around this stage is kind of where my brain starts really really messing with me it starts trying to second guess everything and make me feel like a complete and utter failure <laughs> that happens to you too you're not alone in fact let me know in the comments if you feel that way too maybe it'll help me feel better okay so I'm just blending everything and I know some of this is real dark, but it's going to make the lighter parts look really light, which I think will be a nice effect. Again, I'm not entirely sold yet on the placement of everything. I want to say maybe even the hair is going to have to come up even higher. And like I said, one of the things I'm learning is that 
sometimes it's just little differences that contribute to the likeness. So something may not look exactly like you want it to and you can't exactly figure out what is the difference until you make one little change. Sometimes it's one very tiny change that seems to make all the difference. So, and a lot of times your perspective is skewed based on, again, how you're looking at. Now, again, I'm a freehand drawer. That I, it, it makes it harder to draw things freehand, but it's also challenging, and that's why I do it. I do this for the challenge. If I want this to look exactly identical, I would use measurement tools and proportional dividers and grids and tracing and I don't want to do any of that. I don't have, I don't find any fun in that. I prefer to draw by observation because it's challenging and I like the freedom of that even though it's very frustrating to, to do. So if you're new to this channel and wondering why is the you know why does this look off or why is the guy not do this remember I'm trying to show you guys drawing by observation looking at something and trying to reproduce that on paper So that's why I do this. It's not to, I mean, that's the challenge, right? The challenge there is taking something like this with, and just using your, your observation, making it look like the person you're looking at or the picture you're looking at. And when you get it, it feels really good. And when you don't get it, it feels like crap. <laughs> I'm trying to get the little tiny details inside the eye. Okay. Now right below the eye, it's a little bit lighter. In fact, I wonder if I should zoom in a little bit. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, so right below the eye, in here this plane catches a little bit of light right here and then on this side too so I usually just erase a little bit and then I bring it up by blending all the way up a little bit
side by the tear ducts a little bit darker. Right over the eye, a little darker. I'm trying to look at this negative space right here where the eyebrow eyebrows kind of right in here and it creates this space here okay just lightening the side here And I'm just going to give just sort of a indication of hair, just flicking my pencil a little bit. Just made that a little too dark, but I'm trying to look at this little triangle shape right here. I'm going to lighten it, but if you notice, it's like a white triangle. So I'm going to try and get that in there. See, I went a little too dark here, so I can just use my eraser and kind of just lighten that edge up a little bit. Keeping that triangle in here. This side of the face is obviously the light is hitting it this side, so I'm not gonna put a lot of shading on here. I want to see if I can when this drawing's done. We'll see if we can make this side really look like it's getting hit with, with the light. Okay. necessarily agree with the shape right now of the iris so I'm kind of
might adjust this a little bit here. We might adjust this a little bit. I might end up coming back to that. So maybe we'll move over to the other eye now and give that a little bit of attention. Try to just press really lightly here. The upper eyelid is what looks like it gets darker right in this area. And then it just kind of looks like it comes over this is all going to be darker fix the shape of this a little bit. eyelid here. pupil is too small. It looks kind of weird now that it's all zoomed in, but I think as we continue to work on the drawing a little bit, 
and zoom out um, and refine things, I think it'll get a little bit uh, better. So I'm trying to just look at shapes now and see like right here under the eye. It looks like it this part's catching some light. Of course down here. It's catching some light. Quite not quite that bright, but race and then knock it back down. Okay, and then just to reinforce the eyebrow again, put some indications of hair. Definitely darker right over on this side. So I want to make sure I maintain those values here. Just kind of refining the shape a little bit of the eye. Sorry, I'm so quiet, you guys, but I'm just trying to see if I can recognize the shapes here. Let me pull out a little bit since we're kind of slowly expanding out. You could see all the lines we've made where we were, we've been slowly bringing in the form, adjusting its 
face. Alright, so what I'm doing is we're just slowly going past, we're, we're passing over the drawing multiple times, right? And each time we're passing through it, we're going to be refining it just a little more and a little more. So the first time we did it, it was just a real blurry image that we rubbed out with our hands. This is what I would call the second pass where we're making it a little more refined, a little more rendered. And then there's usually going to be a third pass that we do. And finally a sort of a last time lapse pass that I do, just little tiny changes. So this side of the nose has to be darker. So all up in here. Looks like up in this area. This is all pretty dark, straight up to where that forehead is. I'm just using my blending stump, just blending in everything we just did. This obviously can't stay this bright, so I'm just going to use my blending stump and knock down that nostril. Just by lightly rubbing over it, you can see it's still lighter than this surrounding area. Okay. So that's what I do when I got to make something dark. I'll just put some charcoal on it and then I'll just rub it in and then when we got our race we just take up take our eraser and you know lighten up something like that or knock it back down like that trying to work around this highlight here for the nose. Or somewhere in here there's a highlight. It 
looks like right about in this area. You know, right now this other, this is all too dark. This side can't be the same as this side. This has to be much lighter. So I'll just take my eraser and slowly knock this part back down. And by doing that, we're changing the shape of the nose, letting letting our brains see it for a different shape. Sometimes we can erase more and then we can just use our blending stump to kind of slowly blend it smoother again. So if I'm looking at the nostril, let me knock it back a little bit light there and then we get dark right in this area just like it's dark over here darkness underneath for the philtrum of the lips. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this shape here. Not putting it too much pressure down. Cast shadow comes right out this way, kind of looks like it goes this way. So, this is all in shadow. This is all in shadow. The shadow I can see goes from the eye kind of down. Shadow. Slowly rub that in. is the part of the drawing where if you weren't filming, most of you aren't going to be filming when you're drawing. It's uh, pretty fun because you get a little lost in the drawing because you're looking for the tiniest changes in light and value. This is what you do when you're drawing by observation. Remember, we don't have any tools. We don't have any, we're not using grids and tracing paper. We're, we're just teaching our brain to see and to translate those observations onto paper. Yes, it is a challenge. 
There is no doubt about that. This is definitely a challenge. But when we get really good at this, and notice I said we, because I'm still a work in progress, as we get better at this, it becomes more satisfying when you nail it end up getting that likeness down or you end up getting your drawing to look like the person even though you know you didn't do any sort of measuring this is all just you looking at something with like that's such a good feeling it's such a good feeling So I'm not putting a whole lot of anything on this side of the face. I want this to be almost as white as possible because that's really going to give it that illusion of light hitting it. And the more you put down, the more you start seeing other um, shapes. You know, you start. It's 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 hard to explain, I guess. But like the the more shading you put down, the more pencil strokes you put down. You start comparing those to other things that are already down there, and making a bigger picture. So, gener generally speaking, the further you go into the drawing, the easier it's going to become because you're going to have more points of reference to look at and to compare. Where it's hard in the beginning when you just have a white piece of paper, right? <clears throat> you have a white piece of paper and you don't even know where to start half the time. But now that we're starting to get something down, it's, uh, we got more to work with. Okay. We're almost coming up on the two hour mark. Um, I think I mentioned it just in the intro of this video, but this is a very, this guy that I'm drawing, his name's Duncan Way, and he's a very, very talented artist, somebody I certainly look up to. I don't even know if he'll see this video, he's, but if he does, that would be really cool. Um, but that's kind of one of the reasons why I'm taking a little bit of time with this one, because knowing that I'm drawing somebody that I artistically look up to it's uh, something you don't want to mess up on you know what I mean? You know what I mean Jellybean? so I want to try and do him some justice here since he definitely has a unique sort of look to him. 
I want I'm trying to capture his likeness to the best of my ability. So right now I'm kind of just looking at the facial hair, seeing try, you know, like this shape right in here on the picture, there's kind of like this little V shape maybe. Kind of goes like a little V. So I'm just kind of seeing if I can honor those shapes somewhat. Okay. Notice how the darker we're making things, the, the more this is standing out. So it's really going to, and then when I put some shading on the side, it's really going to give the impression that uh, he's, that the light is coming from that side. So I, th I think we actually did pretty good with his lips here. You know, his lips are right in this area. And so beneath his lips is where the facial hair comes right up to it. Pretty darn close to it. Now there's not this big space right here that you're seeing, so I have to be mindful of that. But notice I do see that the lip has no hair here, and then it's a little bit clearer in here for the chin hair. So I'm just trying to look and see where is it darker, you know, like right over in this area, it's getting darker, right? So I'll, like all, let me see if I can kind of outline it. Here's the side of the mouth. So this kind of goes from here. down this angle, see that, how this, this part's all kind of darker. So if you see stuff like that, we want to put it in. I got about four minutes left, so we're wrapping up on this almost hour number two. Definitely darker right in this area. And again, it's all observation, so we're just observing. I didn't notice how dark it was until I started putting down the other values. So the more, again, the more you put down, 
the more you start to see the relationships that one thing has to another. So, where's that smile line? The smile line kind of goes from here. There's a little space, so it's kind of where we had it. Right in this area. darker here I'm trying to look at the mustache and see the shape it kind of comes out to here all right you got the smile line here then there's this space where the hair gets a little darker over here. This meets up down here where this is darker. Okay, but this is darker. Alright, so this is going to be all up over here. And I'm just rubbing it in with my finger for right now because we can smooth it out and as we keep going over and over well it'll start giving more hair texture okay so let's pull back a little bit and see what it looks like Okay, that's where we're at now. So we're gonna take a quick break and uh, we'll keep refining it. We'll add down in here and uh, probably have at least another hour or so to go. So be right back. Okay, back from my break and gonna work more on Mr. Duncan here. So. I'm just going to kind of jump probably a little bit all over the place. I'm not too sure if I have any specific game plan. observing these changes in value that's what I'm trying to do at this stage I'm trying to just see the changes in value you know I'm, I'm trying to look at the space between the eyebrows and the eyelid trying to see the, the dark spots right here. I'm noticing very lightly that there's little lines, very faint lines that go like this, kind of where the smile would be, the smile lines for the eyes. Possibly not this dark, but... knocked down actually this needs to be I think knocked down a little bit not so bright under the eye still want to keep the brightness there 
but we don't want it as bright as some of the stuff on this other side because this side of the face is away from the light. So I'm just blending this in a little bit, knocking that down. A lot of times I'll also squint my eyes to see if I can group shapes together. You know, like if I look closely, I'm seeing it goes dark, light, dark, light. I don't see that on the picture. I don't see it going... If I squint my eyes, it just goes dark, light, dark. So, based on that, I might add a little bit more charcoal in here and then blend it in together. Make this more of a unified shape. See, now it just kind of goes dark, light, dark. And sometimes then you can look within the darkness. Well, within the darkness, this part by the nose, by the nostril, is darker than this part. So then you can start kind of reinforcing the darkness within. You know, within the darkness, this part right by the eye is darker than this part down here. So I might just add a little bit more charcoal in that. And um, at this stage, my eyes are kind of jumping all over the place. Not too sure and if I have any rhyme or reason to making these decisions. I'm just kind of. <laughs> shading and jumping around asking myself is it could this part be smoother things like that so again this side of the face is going to be really white and bright. I do think I might have to redo this angle of the cheek maybe. I'm thinking that uh, I'm thinking that this cheek Kind of going to go out a little bit, ever so slightly. And then it's going to turn in. Like that. And so this is going to be... shaved off you see just something simple like that and we're kind of changing the shape of the face just a little bit it just kind of thins it out ever so slightly
Okay. All right. Where do I want to go from here? What do I want to do? Looks like they're right along the rim of the nose. It's a little lighter. Add that in there. Still have the highlight here on the tip of the nose. So hopefully that's going to read pretty well. I think we're good. We might end up making this side a little bit darker. Um, I'm not sure yet. I definitely need to darken this part here because these two values look pretty similar and they shouldn't be. So I'm just gonna knock this back down. hair on this side looks like it starts a little above the eyebrow probably right in this area as it starts to come up maybe something like that I think I'm feeling pretty good about the the height of the hair. Just like right in here, it looks like that's about where the part is. Comes up. And then it comes out this way. Okay, so the ear, I'm just gonna maybe just put a little little details in the ear. Again, just trying to look at the shape. So there's kind of this little triangle looking thing, triangle looking shape here. And down over here. Kind of comes in. Out. So just when you're doing this kind of thing, just try and think of shape and value. What's the shape and then how dark do I make that shape? Think big and then work your way smaller.
So the hair, I'm just going to kind of add the charcoal sort of in the direction of the hair. And I'm going to come back to the hair again in a little bit. I just want to get some value down there. So we're slowly getting there. So you can see it's, I think it looks like them. So I think we did an okay job um, capturing his likeness. If you guys think so, I'd appreciate you hitting that thumbs up button for me. Kind of gives me some confidence. So now we'll start to, in order to kind of bring the face in and really capture the, you know, the final touches of this, I want to work a little bit here on the clothing. I'm kind of just getting the shoulder line down here. Uh, that's the shoulder line. You know, we could say maybe this is where the neck goes. Kind of where I had it before, I could still see my line here. shadow that comes out I'm trying to look at this angle that we're making here this shadow goes like this so this is the shadow. Then there's a little sliver of white, which is going to be this part here. This comes back up like this. And then that slowly merges into this. Okay, so we'll say that's the white part. We'll leave that white. Everything else below this is going to be his shirt. Everything above this is his neck. Now if we're looking at the neck, it looks like if we divide his chin, okay, if we divide his chin, from here to here, if we divide it in half, it looks like slightly above that is where that shadow is. 
So it's going to be a shadow somewhere somewhere over here. This is all the dark side. And technically speaking, this is all going to be sort of a different shade. So I could probably just lightly take my pencil and just give it a little layer of charcoal. But then give it a little bit more on this side because this is the shadow side. Okay. And I can rub this in, blend it in. This just makes it smoother, but now it's not white, so it'll give us a skin texture. Let me back, pull out a little bit, just a little bit. Okay. There we go. I see you, Duncan. Okay, I also want to see if I can maybe get some of the details of the folds in his shirt. So what I'm doing is now I'm looking at the, if you look at the shirt, the shadow, the white t-shirt, and then after the white t-shirt there's these shapes, these shadow shapes. So I'm trying to draw out sort of these shadow shapes. doesn't have to be exact. But I am, am trying to do my best to sort of map out something here. And I'm kind of losing myself here in the lines. I'm almost forgetting what I'm looking at. But as I, shot, as I start shading it, I think it'll make a little more sense. At least I hope it will. But when it comes to like shirts and patterns and stuff like that, to me it's more important than ever to just again remind yourself to try and find the shape of things. Just see if you can find shapes and lines and may not look like anything at first you know like if you look that just looks like a bunch of lines right now but I think will end up making it look decent 
We're just mapping out information the same way we map out eyes and nose and things of that nature. That's what we're trying to do at least. You know, so see it looks like he's always wearing like a white t-shirt right now. So then I'm going to have to look at again what I just did and see what is what. So that's the white t-shirt. And it's going to go white dark. So I know this is all in shadow. This is going to be shadow here. It's definitely... So this is shadow. And it goes... Shadow. This is shadow. I'm just putting it all the same value right now, even though we're going to refine these little shadow shapes. I'm just putting it all the same. area again these aren't exact nothing's um, really exact here it's just the little is gonna add up to a lot I think I think we're gonna charcoal to make this a little darker. I'm going to have to figure out a way to really separate this part, his face from the shirt. So we kind of lost a lot of the 
I mean, I guess we can still see it on the on the camera. I'll just kind of reinforce some of the shadow shapes. This part can be kind of boring because you know you're just kind of working on clothing, but sometimes that's not a bad thing because uh, at the end we'll probably look back and go, wow, look at the detail on the clothing. Like it, sometimes these things pay off, pay dividends, and it makes the overall drawing look better because uh, of the little details like what we're trying to add with clothing. I don't want to color in this part of the shirt yet just because my hands just gonna get it all messed up. So we're just trying to work a little bit more on the hair. This side's definitely the darker of the two sides. Okay. Not darkening it so much up here because he's got some highlights. The light is hitting this side of his head. pencil. Alright. Alright, Duncan is slowly taking shape. I'm still wondering if what kind of 
background or something I should add. And uh, yeah, I'm still still playing with that one. I almost wonder if I should. this look like. I mean that really makes that part stand out not sure not sure yet if I'm wanting that or not so I'll just kind of throw some in right now just to it stand out a little bit. Um, I'm thinking maybe we need a little bit more shadow on this side. So I'm just going to lightly take my charcoal pencil. I hope I don't regret this, but I'm just going to lightly, because this is a side plane of the head, so I'm, I'm just thinking maybe this needs to be a little bit darker. If we don't like it, well, we can always use our eraser and kind of touch it, touch it back a little bit. All 
I was trying to see if maybe I can knock down the brightness just a little. I mean, I probably could afford to do that. So like how bright that looks. Hold on one second, someone's at my door. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, I just keep getting all these interruptions. So I was saying I like, I think I kind of like this tone in the background. Just kind of breaks it up a little bit. I'm wondering if I can just use my finger to knock this down just a little bit. I don't know if I like pure white like that. So let's knock this down. That's kind of the beauty of charcoal is you get it all over your finger. And then you can use your finger as a tool to kind of paint with it. See, so it's still very bright, but I think it's maybe a little too bright. I'll knock it back a little here and then I can use the eraser if I want to bring it back out again. Okay. So like on the cheek Looks like this part is going to be brighter than this part. I mean, this is all bright, but... But it looks really bright right up in here. So just add that highlight. Forgot my my little stick that I use to balance my hand. Let me go get that real quick. Okay. Now I mentioned it before, but again, being a pretty you know, I mean this is this is still a new new YouTube channel and I'm still kind of learning the best way of doing things. Um, you know, if you're looking, if you're watching this channel and you're trying to draw hyper realism, then this probably isn't the channel for you because I'm not trying to copy a photograph. I don't want you to look at my artwork and go, man, I can't even tell that's a drawing. In fact, it's the opposite. I want you to be able to see that it's a drawing. But I want it to look good at the same time. Yeah, 
and hopefully you can learn from that as well so you can do it on your own you can take a picture whether it be a family member somebody famous someone from your favorite movie or TV show and draw something really nice like that's kinda like what I'm hoping this channel can help teach Oops, slide my picture all around. So I'm just asking myself in my head over and over here questions, you know, what needs to be darker, what needs to be lighter, something needs to be darker, put a little charcoal down, if it needs to be lighter, then or reshaped, then take the eraser and kind of reshape it. As you can see, that added a little more white there, so then you can just take your blender and kind of blend it back down. Okay. And then also using your own knowledge and intuition to just ask yourself, does this look good? Does this need to, does something look right? Does something look wrong? Do I need to adjust something? We're just about at the final stages here as far as what I like to do with the drawing on camera to me the most important part for you guys <clears throat> and for me when reviewing things is to see how the majority of the drawing uh, came together how did this get created because the hardest part is starting with a blank piece of paper and knowing you know, how do you know where the nose goes? How do you know where the eyes go? How do you, you know, get a likeness down? Those are all things that the first two hours of, or probably close to three hours of this video are gonna be. Ah, about two and a half hours probably is me showing you that with this drawing. But now that we're at this stage, as you could see, there's not much to change. I can't move the eyes anywhere. I mean, we're locked in. So I just got to finish the rest of this, which I will do as, you know, as I go on. This is just going to be probably one solid color, so there's nothing that exciting. But uh, 
what we are going to do is pretty soon here we're going to time lapse everything for the final this this sort of final touches this final stage which is all little tiny details and then of course whenever I time lapse on these tutorial real time drawings you know if you have any questions you see me do something in the time lapse that you know, obviously I don't talk over it, so I can't narrate, but if you see something and you have a question about it, please leave me a comment and let me know. I do respond to all questions. But I think I got his likeness down. So I'm fairly happy with that. And uh, all that really remains is just little tiny adjustments, which don't really do well with real time stuff. So. I'm just kind of looking over things in my head here. just a little bit down in this area. Maybe just like that, ever so slightly. And uh, yeah, so right now there's just a lot of me staring at the picture trying to step back from it and look as much as possible but I have about I gotta take a break in about five minutes I might just take a break now and then what I'll do is I'll take a piece of paper and I'll sit down and I'll write a bunch of notes so I'll write notes that'll say for example um, check uh, check darkness on this eye. Um, double check shadow shapes inside of the eyes. Um, make sure to, you know, whatever. Make sure to, uh, you know, darken around the nostril or something. Like, whatever. I just make a bunch of notes on a piece of paper off camera when I'm not filming and then I come back and one by one I go through everything and do a final pass where we're gonna find we're gonna go through and start making any final touches to the drawing that we have as you can see we're just about done I mean we got it we got his face down we just have to finish this and do the final stuff so I think I'll do that. Let me time lapse the rest, and um, if I don't come back and say anything, uh, actually, you know what? I will come back and say something. So enjoy this time lapse, and we'll be right back.
All right, I think that is all for this drawing. As you can see, I've done a bunch of tweaks in this last few minutes of time lapsing. Um, just adjusted things with the face. I kind of raised the hair a little bit higher. And I like the way it turned out. I think I did capture his likeness. And uh, that is something I'm always looking forward to, to trying to do. So with each one of these drawings, I'm getting better and I'm learning something with every single one. I hope you are too. And if you have any questions or anything, please leave me a comment. Please enjoy these other videos that you see on the screen and I will have another portrait coming out very soon. So please subscribe and we'll talk to you later.